بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم اما بعد ان شاء الله in today's talk uh, we will be uh, covering one of uh, the important subject that's going uh, going around which is about covid-19 and ان شاء الله we'll try to cover uh, a couple of things when we are talking about uh, islamic perspective on the covid-19 um, uh, first thing ان شاء الله we'll talk about is uh, in reference to COVID-19, uh, uh, what, is the, uh, what is the perspective of Islam about uh, life and death, diseases, and uh, epidemics? And uh, then, inshallah, we'll talk about uh, uh, what should be our response as Muslims, uh, as individuals, as, uh, 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 and, uh, as well as, as an ummah. So, uh, before we go the, dive into the COVID-19 issue, I just want to give uh, some of the numbers that I just collected about, uh, about this coronavirus uh, and uh, how, how, how much it's uh, expanding. Uh, as of about 15 minutes ago, the numbers were about over 300,000 people have been uh, impacted by this uh, disease, by this virus. And over 13,000 people have died globally. Now, these are uh, pretty big numbers, and inshallah, uh, we'll look at these numbers with, in context uh, of some other numbers as well uh, that, uh, that impacts the, the Muslims and non-Muslims alike. Uh, so uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about the atrocities and uh, that, the, that, that people or mankind in general uh, get stuck with, or uh, strike by. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Baqarah, بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم ولنبلونكم بشيء من الخوف والجوع ونقص من الأموال والأنفس والثمرات وبشر الصابرين صدق الله العظيم In this ayah, Allah Azza wa Jal is uh, uh, telling us that we test you. <coughs> we put, the, put you through a test with some, time, some sort of a khawf, uh, a fear, a jaw, or, uh, or a hunger, or naqsim min al-amwal, or deficiency in your wealth, wa anfusi wa thamarat, and and your deficiency or, uh, or loss of life even, or loss of uh, thamarat is fruits, but fruits normally referred to here is about the luxuries of the lives that you have. And Allah Azza wa Jalla says, sabirin, but there is uh, a glad tiding for the Ashabirin. Sabirin are the ones who are the one who stick with the command of Allah Azza wa Jalla, uh, no matter what kind of a situation uh, they are in. And uh, this uh, concept of uh, sabr has to be understood correctly. What means by that is, is it doesn't mean that you are uh, uh, you get into a difficulty or. Uh, you have been beaten up by somebody by uh, doing the dhulm on you, and you just stay silent. Uh, a sabr means that uh, whether you are going through any kind of a difficulty, it's uh, related to your life, related to your wealth, related to your health, you continue to stick with the commands of Allah Azza wa Jal, and your action is driven by what Allah wants from you, even whatever situation you are in. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on about these kind of a test that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed us in. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, الَّذِينَ إِذَا أَسَابَتْهُمْ مُصِيبَةً قَالُوا إِنَّ لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّهِ رَاجِعُونَ and, and those who are struck by these musibah uh, these or the, these calamities, they are the one who say, indeed, Allah is the one to whom we return. We belong to Allah Azza wa and we return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about these people, the one who, who responds whose response about these bala or these uh, uh, tests are like this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those are the ones upon whom uh, are blessings from their Lord and mercy. And it is those who are rightly guided. So this is the way Allah Azza wa Jal expects from us when we are stri striken by any kind of a calamity, meaning any kind of a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. now, there are actually two different kinds of calamities that can happen over the people. One is by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the other could be man-made. Now, as a Muslim, we understand no matter what kind of a calamity it is, it is a test from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or somebody else has placed us in a difficult time, we still are bound by the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We act by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants from us. Okay? 
Now, nowadays, <coughs> nowadays, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has placed us in a test uh, which is through the COVID-19. Uh, whether, uh, unfortunately, there's some people, they may be talking about this as uh, it is, whether it's a conspiracy theory or not, it is created by one country or another. This is not the discussion today. Uh, rather, we like to talk about how, uh, as Muslim, we are taking it and how the rest of the, the world is taking this kind of a calamity that is falling on them. Now, uh, unfortunately, many of the people, they are, uh, they are getting into panic state. And uh, that panic state is creating more problems than uh, uh, the, the, this virus has caused over the people. Now, th this, uh, this panic that people are going through, that may make sense uh, from uh, of, of a non-Muslim who, or a person who does not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who does not believe in the hereafter. If he is the one acting into this kind of a panic, you may think of it, okay, that makes sense because that person has thought of the life is only this dunya. Whatever he lives, whatever he can get out of this dunya, that's all that matters. So from his perspective, panic, you can think of it fine. He is about to lose everything that he is working for. While as a Muslim, we understand that life and death is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can give us more time to live in this dunya and nobody can take life away from us or any one of us. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in uh, Surah Al-Araf and many other places, actually this, this idea Allah has placed in multiple places, which is, وَلِكُلِّ أُمَّةٍ أَجَلُ فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لَا يَسْتَأْخِرُونَ سَعَةٍ وَلَا يَسْتَقْدِمُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, for every nation Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has placed a time, okay, time for, uh, uh, to live in this dunya. Uh, then say, لا يستأخرون سعة. And it cannot, a سعة cannot be, uh, uh, it cannot be delayed or it cannot happen before that. Meaning the life, of, uh, the time of death cannot come before it's time to go and it cannot be uh, delayed or uh, uh, move forward. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of the creation, the most beloved of Allah azza wa jal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah is saying, say, O Muhammad So he's telling you to, to tell, so Allah Sallam himself should, should tell to the people, I have no power over any harm or profit to myself, except what, illa mashaAllah, except what Allah may have will. And then Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala goes on, Same message as I mentioned in Surah Araf, this is in Surah Al Yunus, Allah Azza wa Jal is reminding, even Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he did not have this kind of authority to increase or decrease anybody's life. So we can imagine nothing else can have this kind of a, uh, this kind of a authority or this kind of a, uh, say to increase or decrease. Now, uh, decrease the life. Now, about uh, the epidemic or any kind of a disease. Uh, when it comes to the epidemics uh, and diseases, I'm, I will not be going into the idea of what are what should be our precautionary actions, as uh, I think there's abundant of information uh, by the people who are uh, who are actually. If you want to call it, they are the experts in the field, which are the physicians and uh, uh, the ones who are, uh, have done specialization in infectious diseases or uh, epidemics and things like that. They have put a lot of information out there. Many different nations are placing the information out there that can be sought by, ourselves, by anyone who would like to do. So this is not the subject of today's talk. Rather, I'll be talking about from Islamic perspective about diseases and epidemics. Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentions about, uh, uh, about, about a plague. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, uh, reported by Usama bin Zayd. And this hadith is muttafaq alayh, meaning it's reported by both uh, Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim in their sahihain. If you hear 
about the ta'un. Ta'un is uh, the plague on the earth. Fala tadkhuluha, do not enter into it. Wa idha waqa bi earth, and if it happens in the earth, wa antum fiha, and you are in it, fala tukhriju minha, then you should not leave. So 1400 years ago, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has already, he already mentioned to us this method of quarantining that people talk about today. That, which is, if there is a plague, then stay in, if you are in the land where the plague has happened, you stay in there. If you are uh, outside, then do not enter into the land. That's the, uh, the, this is what Islam says about the plague, and this is how we are supposed to act. So we already are commanded by Allah Azza wa Jal to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what should be our stance in the cases of uh, for plagues or epidemics or uh, in case of pandemic to just to restrict it. Uh, when it comes to the diseases, so Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, ma anzal Allahu da illa anzal Allahu shifa, meaning that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, there, uh, there is no disease that Allah has created except that he has also created his treatment. So now when it comes to any kind of a disease, there is for sure, there is a cure by Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. So for sure that this disease that we are talking about, COVID-19 or any kind of a disease that we that will that have come up so far or will come up until the day of judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala has created the shifa for it. So inshallah, uh, uh, if there is no cure for this at this point for the disease, there will be uh, they will be found or people will inshallah uh, get over with the, the disease that we are uh, coming across at this point. Now. When it comes to uh, diseases and, uh, and the shifa uh, or the cure, as a Muslim, we understand that shifa comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so is the disease. Now, from that perspective, we understand that nobody can get sick if, unless Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordained that kind of a sickness on the person. And nobody can get the cure unless Allah uh, gives the cure to the person, and we can uh, we can see that actually um, uh, in our own lives. There are many instances we see that people who are living in exactly ditto same uh, circumstances, whether we're talking about the people, whether we are talking about uh, uh, the age group, we're talking about gender or location, environment they're living in. We find that some of those people get sick in, certain, uh, in those circumstances, while others don't. And similarly, we can find that uh, the people who have got sick, they may be of exact same, uh, uh, if you want to call it, even they could be twins. And the people who are twins, uh, exactly uh, identical twins, and they are sick by the same disease, and the same medication is given to them, you find that one of them get cured, but the other, other is not cured. So that, that shows us that it's not just the medication, it's not the doctor's uh, speciality or uh, uh, how good he is, which school he went to and how much practice he has or how much experience he has. Rather, there is something else is involved in the cure of that person. And that is, the, that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and, and we understand this from many hadith and ayat that shows us that as far as the, the shifa goes, that is also in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So as a Muslim, uh, we are the one who should be uh, at, at ease, who the one who should be, uh, be calm, and the one who are actually guiding the people towards the, towards the message that gives them peace in this dunya and in the akhir. Now, uh, as I mentioned, that uh, when we are talking about uh, COVID-19 and the panic state that has happened, we should not forget about the uh, other kinds of difficulties and atrocities which are also happening in the world and the diseases which are happening in the world, which may be we may be able to avoid it. And... Uh, for that, uh, I like to give some numbers so we have an idea what I'm talking about and then we can understand why am I bringing uh, these numbers. Uh, it is one of the numbers is about the people who get typhoid globally. There's about 11 to 20 million people, they get sick of typhoid on a yearly basis. This is the, these are the numbers from uh, WHO. 
And out of those 11 to 20 million, 11 to 20 million people, uh, uh, about 128,000 people, 128,000 to 161,000 people, they die every year. Every year, 128,000 to 161,000 people die out of typhoid. typhoid. <laughs> Similarly, another number from UN, these are from 2012. Approximately 25,000 people die daily out of another disease. That disease is called hunger. 25,000 people are dying on a daily basis. Compare this number with whatever we are talking about. The whole world is at freeze at this point. They're going into a global lockdown because of about 13,000 people have that. I'm not trying to undermine this problem. Do not take me wrong here. I am just trying to make sure we also pay attention to things which are happening around us, which can for sure be avoided, which can sure be avoided, but they're not avoided. Similarly, there are numbers by CDC that say about 2,195 children die every day because of diarrhea. Diarrhea is killing over 2,000 children on a daily basis, which is more than combined AIDS, malaria, uh, measles, combined. It's more than that, over 2,000 people, uh, children are dying because of diarrhea. Another CDC number about over 1 million people die globally every year from viral hepatitis. This corresponds to over 27,000 deaths per day. 2,700, sorry, 2,700 deaths per day. Now, these are the ones I'm talking about, which is about the diseases which are happening. And many of these diseases can be avoided. I believe we all understand that disease of hunger can be avoided across the world. Where we know within the country where we are living in, many places, the food has been destroyed to keep the prices up. Just to keep the prices stable. The milk has been thrown. There's vegetables that have been thrown just to keep the prices high. On top of it, there are many nations in the world where people are not dying because of hunger. They're dying because of obesity. They're eating so much that that is causing many diseases. That is killing people. That is, that is the state uh, we are living in. And I'll talk about that also, why we are in this state as well. It's not the issue of just showing some numbers. Now let's look at the numbers of our own brothers and sisters. In Syria, since 2011, this uprise has started. A revolution has started. Until March 2020, according to the numbers given by the UN, uh, uh, SOHR, which is uh, Syrian Observatory for Human Rights. It says between 384,000 and 586,100 uh, people have been killed during this war. That is equal to approx approximately 147 deaths per day for the past 10 years on a daily basis. This is the number we are talking about here. 147 people die on a daily basis for 10 straight years. Rohingya, 24,000 people were killed by, uh, by Myanmar military just between 2017 and 2018. 18,000 Rohingya women been raped. 116,000 Rohingya were beaten. 36,000 Rohingya were thrown into the fires. This is about just Rohingya, Kashmir, uh, Syria, Kashmir, then the list goes on and on and on. Besides that, when it comes to just the water condition, about 785 million people, one in nine, lack access to safe water. Two billion, and two billion people, one in three approximately, lack access to a toilet. Now, these things that we're talking about, this is not the virus that's causing diseases. It's not the virus that's killing the people. It's us. It's a human being, mankind. 
Mankind is at the brink of killing people of their own at this point. And that is the result of the current, the current systems which are managing the lives of the people. That's the reality we are living in now. Now, so now, having said all this, we understand the issue of COVID-19. We are all locked down. People are in panic state. <laughs> and on top of it, we, are, we, are, we hear the numbers about what's happening in the rest of the world. Besides, people even before even coronavirus reached the people, there are other kind of viruses, which is the hunger, which is the lack of uh, clean water, the lack of clean sanitary places, diarrhea, uh, typhoid, uh, hepatitis, uh, and on and on and on. These things are already killing people. So what should be the role of a Muslim today? That, that, that's the key thing. I, I really want to stress this point of what is our role? What should we be doing today? Now, as a Muslim, number one thing to understand, when uh, we are the one Allah Azza wa Jal has chosen to lead the mankind, we are the one who should be the leaders of the mankind. We have the haq, we have the truth, we are the one who is carrying the message that can bring justice for the whole mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Imran, A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem, kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas, ta'maruna bil ma'aruf wa tanhawna anil munkar, wa tu'minuna billah. You are the best nation raised for the mankind. This is not me telling you that you are the best nation. This is not anybody on the street telling us you are the best nation. It is the creator of the heavens and the earth. He is the one who has given us this title. Let's make sure that we are the one who attain this title. and We are the one who keep, take this title back. Unfortunately, we have lost this title. The reason that we are losing, the, uh, we have lost, or we are losing this title is because we are not doing the job that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has linked this title with. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, ummatin linnas, bil ma'ruf wa wa billah. So there's a condition attached to it. And the condition is that you are the one who enjoin the good. You forbid the evil. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, in this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even bring in this, uh, this, uh, the actions which are linked to be the best nation, actually Allah is mentioning this before the iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. does not mean that we can achieve this without having the iman. It is just Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us because when he said, Kuntum khayra ummatin nas, when you are the ummah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you are already believing in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But when it comes to the action of Allah, it, Subhanahu wa ta'ala is stressing that Amr bil Ma'roof and Ahl Munkar is a very important action that has to be done by the Sunnah to achieve this title of the best Sunnah. And then Allah is saying, you, and you believe in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, meaning this is all of this have to be done, not just one or other. When the order is mentioned like this, it is just to stress one point over the other. But all three things have to be there Amr bil Ma'roof, Nahi Ahl Munkar, and believing in Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, they all have to be there. So this is, uh, a, a, a first we have to have this goal to understand that this is what we want to attain. This is what we want to achieve. This is where this ummah belongs. Now, as a, uh, on the ind individual level, of course, we can go out, we can help out whoever we can, whoever is going through this kind of uh, disastrous situation of COVID-19, uh, and we will take all the measures that should be taken when we are uh, trying to convey uh, the message uh, or to try to help the people, why are we trying to help the people? Helping the people also include that we must carry this message of Islam to the people. Now Allah has given us this opportunity in these difficult times where people are willing to listen where, because they are, they, are, they, they, are, they are sick of the current uh, the systems of lives, they are not giving them the solutions of life. Whether it is, you talk about the hospital system, where when people are getting sick. Now today, as you can see that, the situation we are in, that uh, NBA uh, players, they get, even though they don't show any kind 
of uh, uh, signs that they are sick or anything, but they can be tested. While a normal person, if he goes for a test for the COVID-19, uh, even if he's showing all the signs, he will be t told, we don't have enough tests, go and quarantine yourself in, in your houses. Now, th this is the situation we are in because it, the society, the way it is set up, it is set up in a way that it is for the survival of the fittest, the one who has wealth, the one who, has, who can uh, uh, get everything. Then he is the one who is eligible to get be tested. He's eligible to get the cure probably if there is any cure. They will be the one who will be getting the cure first. They will be getting in the hospitals first. Like we know, we heard about uh, Italy now today. Now, they have decided that anybody over 80 years old, if he is impacted, he's not the one who's going to get the cure. They will just leave him to die. So these are the people who probably lived all their lives. Probably they got retired. And now they are in a situation where they will be hoping that they had some sort of a retirement money or there's something uh, the, the state will take care of them. The, the state is dumping them on the side and letting them die. Islam does not do that, the, the things like this. Islam is the one who takes care of the people. Islam is the one who comes in, no matter you're, you're old or, uh, or young, you are uh, a child or an adult, you are rich or poor. As a matter of fact, uh, Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu an said that if, he said uh, uh, that he's the one who will make sure that uh, the, the rights of the weak have been given. He will make sure that it does not happen that the, poor, the strong will come and take the rights of the weak. Similarly, in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when a woman, she, she stole something and her hand was about to be cut. And uh, some, some of the Sahaba, this woman was makhzumiyah. And some of the Sahaba, they sent Usama bin Zayd to uh, talk to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So in a way that uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam take the punishment away from her. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa response was, that uh, the previous nations were destroyed because when the rich among them or strong among them committed uh, a sin, they let them go. But when the weak or the poor committed a crime, they applied the punishment system. And Rasulullah Sallam said, even if his daughter Fatima, radiallahu anha, if she commits, if she's the one who she steals, Rasulullah Sallam said he would cut her hand as well. So this is the system of justice that Islam provides. This is the system that takes care of the people. And uh, uh, we can find many other examples in the lives of uh, the Khulfa Rashidin as well, when it comes to how they were taking care of the people uh, in, the, in the time of uh, Umar bin Khattab radiallahu an. There was a year which is called Amur Ramada. Amur Ramada, uh, which means the year of the ashes. This was a year when in the Medina and the surrounding of Medina, there was a famine going on. And uh, uh, the situation was getting worse and worse. And even people did not have uh, milk and ghee and, uh, 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 and yogurt. They were not even available for the people. So Omar al-Khattab, he said, he actually swore that he would not eat ghee, yogurt, and milk until all the people could afford to have these things. This is what Omar al-Khattab said. And later on, there was some uh, ghee and yogurt came to the marketplace. So one person went and he bought, uh, uh, <clears throat> he bought some ghee and uh, he brought for Omar al-Khattab radiallahu anh. And Omar asked him that uh, how much he paid for that. He said he paid 40 dirhams. 40 dirham for just for ghee was a lot of money. So Omar al-Khattab said, that he will not eat this ghee until it is available for all the people. Because 40 dirham could not be afforded by all the people. So he made sure that everybody has to, uh, should be able to, uh, to, to, to get these basic necessities before even he gets it. And so how I used to say, the way Omar al Khattab was continuously, he was fasting on a daily basis during these times, that, uh, and he was not getting enough to eat. And they thought of it as if he will die because of that. And he was, uh, he was very concerned about the, about the people. And uh, one time, uh, his, uh, uh, he, uh, and he, because he was living ba basically on, on bread and oil. So his uh, stomach was growling. And he, was say, he said to his stom stomach, rumble as much as you like, for by Allah, you will not eat ghee 
until the people eat it. This is, this is, this is the, the statement of Umar al-Khattab radiallahu anh. And this is the way we, uh, uh, we understand that Islam rules over the people. Islam takes care of the affairs of the people, so the people do not, uh, are not uh, deprived of basic necessities. Now, when it comes to justice, similarly we find in the time of Ali bin, uh, Ali bin Abi Talib radiallahu anh, one time his, uh, he lost his uh, shield and uh, he was coming back from one of the battles and he saw in the marketplace a Jew was selling the shield. He recognized his shield. He went to the Jew and he said, this is my shield. And the Jew said, no, this is in my possession. It's my shield. So now Ali said, we have to go to the judge. So he took him to Qadi Shurih, rahimahullah. And uh, when he went to his, uh, uh, the judge, the judge asked Ali radiallahu anh, he, he told him, Amir al that uh, where are your witnesses? If you said the shield belongs to you, bring your witnesses. Now Ali said his, uh, his, uh, his slave Qambar and Al-Hassan and Hussein, they are his witnesses. And uh, Qadi Shurai said that you know that the testimony, testimony of the son for the father does not count. And Ali said, uh, 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 and basically the decision was made in the favor of the Jew. And a Jew, when he saw the justice of Islam, he realized that even the Amir al muminin he has to go through the judicial system to get his right if that right belongs to him. And he realized that if the, if the decision was made in his favor, right away, he became a Muslim. He took the Shahada and became Muslim. And Ali radiallahu anh, he gave the shield as a gift to him. Not only that, also he gave his, his horse to the Yahudi as well. To the Jew. And this is, uh, and Islam is full of these kind of incidents that we can find. Now, why am I bringing these examples while we are talking about uh, COVID-19 uh, virus or the, what is Islamic perspective? The reason is this. One, uh, the way that things have been taken care of today, it is uh, in a biased manner, first of all, it is not, a, the, uh, the, the health system is not available equally for all the people. It is rather, uh, as I mentioned, it is more for the, the one who, who have the wealth, the one who are powerful, they have access to all the health systems, while the one who is not, he cannot get it. And this is result of the current system that we are living in. And, and, and similarly, the hoarding that we are seeing uh, going on by the individual people. That's also a result of the very same existing system that pushes individualism to the throats of the people. People are raised with this concept of just me, me, and me. I want to save myself, as, as they say, me, myself, and I, um, me, myself, and I. So I'm just trying to save myself only. And they also realize that even if I don't protect myself, nobody else is going to help me. This is how people are people's minds have been trained. This is why they are hoarding. And they, rather than, as Islam teaches us, to share the thing instead of hoarding. And we, see, we can see examples, even when the people are about to die, we can see examples among, uh, in the history of Islam that when uh, uh, some of the Sahaba, they were in a battlefield and one of them was injured and somebody brought water for him and he said, no, give it to my brother. He reached the second one. And he said, no, give it to the third one. And the other one, and uh, uh, and by the time he went to the last one, the last one uh, passed away, and the guy went to the first person, and he was already martyred as well, and the second and third, and all of them uh, achieved the martyrdom. But the thing is, this idea was engraved in their mind that we have to take care of each other. That is only can that can only come through the message of Islam, and uh, uh, Islam is the only one that can show us. The, or teach us how to sacrifice our own needs or, over the needs of the other, how to be generous. And this is something that we cannot see in the current system. And the, and the current system is the same system that is causing this. Look, when it comes to the wealth, there is enough wealth that exists around the world. But all those things that I talked about, the, the, the way the number of people are dying 
because of different kinds of diseases or the lack of resources, lack of food, lack of water. That is not because there's not enough water. That's not because not, there's not enough water, uh, food out there. It's not because there's not enough medications out there to, to cure the sick. It's rather the distribution of this wealth is not done properly. And we are ending up in this situation. And that male distribution is the core of the current system. And this system does not provide the solution for the distribution of the wealth. It only talks about how we can create more and more. We can do the production. Doesn't matter who comes and take uh, all the goods from the market. As we can see, many examples that happen today. Nowadays, in, uh, because of COVID-19, uh, that there are people who have bought thousands of, uh, what do you call the thing that you clean your, wipe your hands with? Uh, 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 hand sanitizers, or there are people who are filling their garages with toilet paper. Stupidest thing. I don't know where they got the idea of toilet paper is going to save their lives or something. But anyway, so they are uh, co collecting toilet papers or sanitizers, and some of them are trying to sell them over the, uh, over the Amazon now. That is because of the very same uh, concept of everybody just worry about themselves. And when it comes to the state, they are not there to make sure the need of every individual has been fulfilled. And this idea of fulfilling the need of every individual only come from Islam. Islam makes sure it's not the issue of that we can increase the production, rather Islam makes sure that needs of every individual, every human being has been fulfilled. Okay, so now what is the message that I like to give for ourselves? What should we be doing? Number one thing, on an individual basis, Allah Azzawajal has given us this opportunity to take this message of Islam to our fellow human beings, all the human beings out there who, are, who really need Islam today. Islam is the only thing that can save them. But for this, we have to understand, we have to have this belief that Islam is the solution for these things. And once we have that, we have to take this to the people. And there, there are books, thousands of books are written that shows us how Islam can be implemented over the people and bring the justice in all sorts of systems, whether it's economic system, judicial system, ruling system, or social system. I'm not going to go into details of all these systems. We can talk some other times. But this idea that Islam has the solution for all the mankind has to be engraved in our mind, and we have to carry it to the people. That's one thing. Second thing is, when we are taking it, we have to also understand it's not the idea of we want to just people to become Muslim, or uh, uh, yes, we want them to become Muslim. That's not I'm saying that we, we don't, but we also want them to understand the Islam that we are talking about is a way of life. It's a way of life that answers all the problems, or uh, has an answer for all the problems of life. Okay, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةِ الْعَالَمِينَ This, that we have sent you, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, uh, nothing but the rahmah, but the mercy for the mankind. And now this idea of, of besides the individual is uh, from the individual perspective, we have to take him to that level also that people can understand that not only that we want to become Muslim, people should enter into folds of Islam, or the Muslim themselves, we should also remember that, that this Islam needs to be implemented over the lives as well. It should not be just put on the side and we only remember when we are talking about the spiritual aspects of Islam. Okay, now, Today, uh, um, um, another aspect I want to remind, remind you of is, today is uh, uh, the night of Al-Isra al-Mi'raj. Uh, the reason I want to bring up the Al-Isra al-Mi'raj is not to talk about Al-Isra al-Mi'raj, but uh, the next day, which is the 28th of, uh, uh, of Rajab, was the date when Muslims actually lost the one of the beloved things for us, which was the Islamic State. That was lost about 99 years ago. And today, actually, uh, to tomorrow, it marks the 99 years anniversary of that. And because of not having that system, we are suffering, not only Muslims, but the whole mankind. And this is what we have to remember, that we want to bring people, remind them that we, the Muslims, 
we should be the one who should be leading the mankind towards the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal, and that cannot happen except by implementing the laws and the rules of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala in totality. So, inshallah, I will stop here. And if there is uh, any questions or comments about this subject, uh, I will try to answer. Um, I'm not sure how to take the questions and answer. I will let uh, Brother Jawad to help me out here. Yeah, so they can submit questions in multiple ways. Either they can uh, paste it on the chat, or if they're on the web, they can unmute themselves or, or raise a hand. Um, or if they're on the audio bridge, they can press star six to unmute themselves. So it looks like uh, Brother Ashraf has a question. I'm going to unmute him, okay? Okay. I can Go ahead, you. Brother Ashraf. If you're talking, I cannot hear you. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, Jazakallah khair, Brother Asim, for the uh, topic. Now, my question, when it comes to the COVID-19 or any other disease like this, um, there is a fear in, in our hearts that, hey, if it touches me, I might die. So that's a fear, that's natural fear that we will have. How do we address it, you know, from an Islamic perspective? You know, especially this is an epidemic, it's going on, we don't know if it's gonna, if I will be impacted with it or not. So there is that fear in my heart. Any human, not just a Muslim, will have that. How do we go and address it uh, from, for the Muslims and also for uh, the non-Muslims that we live around? Yeah. Okay, so uh, the, the reality about, so first is from, just from the reality perspective, if you look at, uh, uh, the way that things happen around us. As I mentioned in the talk also, uh, we can say that when it comes to the sickness, you can have uh, two identical twins exactly in the same environment. They eat same, they dress same, they are same, everything in uh, the, the same situation. But we find that uh, when the, some sort of a flu or some sort of a, um, epidemic happens, one of them gets it, the other doesn't get it. Okay, and uh, similarly, it could be a situation where both are sick and you can, you can diagnose them with the same sickness, you give them the same medication, one gets cured, other doesn't get cured. This is just a, a simplistic way of looking at the things about when it comes to sickness and disease, which is, it's not necessarily, uh, we don't know who will get it and who will not get it. That shows that there is something else besides just the environment that we assume or our health uh, of individuals, there's something else that causes the sickness. And this is told by, for example, the, the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa discusses about when he was saying about uh, there is no epidemic, uh, and he did not mean that way, because he, the way Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi talks about when there is an epidemic, you do not enter into the area where the epidemic is, and if you're in there, you do not leave. But he's saying there is no epidemic, and the Sahabi said, but how can we see a camel? Who, uh, who is sick, I mean, if you take that camel to the other camels, they all get sick. So Rasulullah said, what about the first one? How did the first one get sick? I Meaning the point was that the one who causes the sickness is Allah Azza wa Jal. And similarly, the one who gives the shifa is Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. So the cure and shifa both comes from Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala. If it is in, written for us that's going to happen, that is going to happen. So we cannot uh, uh, that this is part of the qada. We, we accept the qada of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yes, we try our best to avoid it and we try our best to cure, get the cure for it. That's one aspect. So to, to avoid the, 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 the difficulty and to reach for the cure, these are the actions which are under our control. And we are accountable for things that are under our control. We are not accountable for the things which are not under our control. Similarly about the death. Death, we know that, that it can happen to Anyone at any time, if this time is there. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. First of all, every one of us will taste that. Kullu nafsin da'iqatul maut. Every one of us will taste that. There is no uh, ifs and buts. This, this reality, everybody will, uh, will, will see it. No matter how, many, how you quarantine yourself, where you quarantine yourself, what you quarantine yourself with. If it's the time to go, we know that we will, we will die. So that, if that is clear, that I cannot 
control my lifespan, meaning I cannot uh, uh, increase my t lifespan or I cannot decrease my lifespan. So I, I will not worry about these things. So that takes the worry away that because we are not accountable for these, the, 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 your lifespan when it ends or when, uh, if you can increase or decrease or not. So that, that's another aspect of it. Once you are clear about that, then you should be, uh, uh, you should be at peace. Now, but that has to be linked with the concept of that we believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that he is the creator of, uh, uh, of everything. He is the one, Allah yuhi wa yumit. He's the one who gives life. He's the one who gives death. That has to be part of, a, that is part of our belief system. And uh, that we are accountable in the day of judgment about our life, uh, about the actions that we do in this life affair. So once we understand all these things, then is the only way we can be at peace. And this is the very same concept that we have to give to the uh, to Muslims and non-Muslims. We have to remind them, all of them, that the life and death is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It cannot reach us if it's not time, and it cannot be delayed if it's not. All right, Jazakallah khair. I'm going to take some questions from the chat group. So first one is, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. You have mentioned that we must take the message of Islam to the people, and for that, we need to understand and believe that Islam provides the solution. However, we have so many Islamic institutions imparting the education to the community, and we have a lot of students of Islam graduating as, graduating as a scholars. So it means we have the people understanding of Islam. Can you shed some light on where we are going wrong or what we have to do differently to be able to make a difference? Jazakallah khair. Okay. Uh, Jazakallah khair for the question. It's, uh, uh, it's a multifold question. There are too many things in there. Uh, um, see, when I'm talking about... Uh, when I say we, first of all, uh, as, as far as the knowledge of Islam goes, that is an obligation on each and every Muslim, right? So uh, it is, uh, uh, the, the, to, to gain the knowledge, it's an obligation on Muslim men and women both, right? So that's one aspect of it. Do not think of it because there are people who are graduating from uh, schools and universities and colleges that, uh, with Islamic degrees, then uh, I'm off the hook, no. For, Every action that we undertake, we have to know what Islam says about that specific action that we are undertaking. So that uh, knowledge has to be gained by each one of us. Okay. Now, when it comes to uh, Islamic institutions, uh, um, alhamdulillah, uh, there is actually a rise of uh, uh, Islamic uh, uh, school graduates uh, within actually even United States as well, who are graduated from uh, some of the madrasat over here. Um, uh, and, and in a sense, uh, and, uh, uh, I, I have been through some of these processes. Uh, but uh, what I see, and that's my understanding. So first of all, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, increase the knowledge of the, all the brothers and sisters who are going through these colleges and universities, uh, and uh, may Allah accept their uh, efforts. They put so much effort to study Islam. Uh, it, is, it is a very, very difficult, tedious job. And uh, if they are not driven uh, by the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I don't know what can drive them to get into that kind of situation. But I hope that this is the only thing that is driving them. Uh, so uh, the problem where I see is uh, many of the uh, schools and the curriculum, if you pay attention to, uh, they uh, are driven in a way. Um, the, look, we are not living in in an Islamic uh, environment, Islamic system anymore. Uh, whether we're talking about the United States, whether we're talking about the, uh, all the other Western countries or the Muslim countries even. Uh, nobody is uh, implementing Islam over the people. So uh, after that, the, the, all the madrasat which are teaching Islam even, you find them that uh, they stress a lot on the individualistic kind of Islam. And uh, Islam, which is only related to individuals most of the time, it's, it's not, you don't find that uh, these madrasa and universities are teaching us, for example, what is the ruling system of Islam? What is the judicial system of Islam? And what is the 
economic system of Islam, social system of Islam, and how that these systems of lives to be implemented. They are teaching uh, to a certain extent, but it's on an individual level. They're not teaching on the level of how to implement it for the people, uh, because uh, uh, these madrasat that we are talking about, uh, they are within the, 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 within the countries, which may not allow them to even talk like this, unfortunately. So that, that's the part I see uh, where the problem is. But alhamdulillah, among the very same scholars, there are many of them because they have all the tools that they require to, uh, to talk about Islam from the perspective of that Islam is a way of life. They have to be implemented, they have to be revived. So that's there. And alhamdulillah, there are many of them are coming out and they are talking like this. But that does not take away uh, an obligation from the neck of each and every individuals who are here. You can so, submit. Uh, it's a long uh, question and it's very difficult to answer in this short period of time. Yeah. Now So the next one um, is, let me go up. Um, I have a question. What about many for the we are unable to perform. What is your opinion? I think that relates um, to the fact that there, because of the COVID-19 virus, there's a lot of prayad that are not being able to be completed. Um, I think that's what the, the writer means, is that uh, massages are closed, Juma has been stopped. What is your, what, what, what's your thoughts on that? The first time in, uh, the masjid was shut down, right? And um, there were many things I want to talk about. That actually reminded me of one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay. I wish I can find the hadith. Uh, the meaning of uh, the, the hadith is actually, just give me a second if I can find the hadith. But anyways, the hadith that talks about it is by, by Hakim. Uh, and uh, that says, uh, Al-Hakim and Al-Ahmad. It says the knots of Islam will uh, will undone one by one. Each time a knot is undone, the next one will be grasped. The first to be undone will be the ruling, and the last will be the prayer. Now, uh, if you pay attention to that, this is the first thing came to my, my mind when, uh, when I heard about, uh, okay, fine, now all the messages are shutting down. They will not allow us to pray Sattu Jummah. That uh, when Rasulullah Sallallahu mentioned that, uh, uh, first not, which is the hukum. Hukum means here that you implement the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala over the people. That will be taken away from the people. And that was taken away. And after that, Muslims continue to grasp on to the next thing, whatever the, the rest is available. And when the, that cannot be done, they went to move to the next one, on and on and on. Now today, we were, it seemed like we were on the last not of it was Salah. And Salah seemed to be in danger now. That you cannot even perform your Salah in the masajid. Of course, you can still continue to pray on the, uh, the individual level or whichever way we can uh, find a way to do, perform Islam al Jum'ah, uh, which Islam allows, actually. Now, uh, the, but the point is, we should not be, uh, the, the thing that surprises me is we became so sad when uh, the masajid start closing. And it is very sad, believe me. But how come we did not pay attention to the very same things about all other ahkam of Allah Azza wa Jal that have been suspended for past 99 plus 99 years? For 99 years. And we, were, we did not, nobody talked about those ahkam. That is because of, unfortunately, the kind of secularized ideas they have been placed and implanted in our minds in a way that we start looking into Islam from very secular way. That Islam is, Islam, uh, I, uh, the Islam uh, has something to do with my individual life, that's Islam. But when it comes to my public life, then there is another system of life that should be organizing my life affairs. And this is, uh, if you pay attention to ourselves, this is what we, we, we look at the things as. Only thing that we worry about when my individual Islam is, uh, so somebody decided to stop me to do those individual things. What about the things which on the society they have to be going to Islam as well? Because we have done the separation as the other 
uh, others did in the past, the separation of church and uh, church and the state or religion and the state, we are doing the very similar things. And now we get sad at that. Yes, uh, those, those, any of the fard, uh, no different than other faraid that have to be performed. And we have to make sure that uh, uh, the necessities or uh, the required things that are needed to implement or to achieve that fard has to be taken care of. So, uh, so salah should not be different than zakat. Zakat should not be different than the hajj. Hajj should not be different than implementing all the rules of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as well. So we have to work towards this goal of implementing Islam as a whole, and that will take care of even Salat al as well, inshallah. Jazakallah khair, brother. Uh, the, the next question comes from, uh, in respect to non-Muslims. Uh, so what are some of the ways we could educate non-Muslims in a way that they can understand and possibly accept Islam regarding the topic of the virus or using the, the, the so issues look, uh, around the virus? When it comes to COVID-19 virus or any other disease or any of the hardships people are going through, in general, uh, people are willing to listen. They are giving your ear, they are, they, they are listening to you, and you have a chance to, uh, to use this uh, window of opportunity to reach out to them. Number one thing. So the discussion opens up here. Now, when you open up a discussion with a non-Muslim, we have to know that uh, what do we want to discuss with them, right? So our discussion with non-Muslims must be linked to the basic aqidah of Islam. When I'm saying basic aqidah of Islam, meaning uh, that the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has to be discussed with them in the rational manner because for a person who does not believe in Islam, the only way he can come to Islam if he is rationally convinced because that's the only basis he has. So once he believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, second thing he has to make sure, we have to make sure he understands the, 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 the messengership of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Quran is the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once these three main, uh, main, main uh, uh, pieces of the aqidah are understood, that la ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah, that is understood, the rest of them actually comes in the form of sam'ana wa ta'ana. Unfortunately, so many times we find that when we start discussing Islam with the non-Muslims, we start discussing the uh, actions or the obligations from Islam rather than talking about the aqidah or the iman or the, the basic creed of Islam. So that is the main thing that we have to discuss with the uh, Muslims, and we can now they are they could be the different people. You may be able to reach them differently. Some people who are scared right now that they can get disease, they can they can they can die. To use this opportunity to make sure they understand. Okay, fine, all of us die. We know that anybody can die at any time, whether it's COVID nineteen or not. Eventually, we know all that. Kobe Bryant died. Everybody was crying about a month or two ago, and now nobody's talking about Kobe Bryant anymore. COVID-19 COVID has become bigger than the Kobe Bryant now. So see, this is how uh, uh, pe people, uh, people forget those things. But when they remember, this is the time to connect it to their own life so they can feel that, okay, now I can die. I can die. Okay, if I die, where am I going to go? Am I going to be questioned or not? And this is what Rasulullah was. He was a Bashir and one Adira. He was the one who was giving people the glad tiding and the warning. So we should remind them of okay, there is a life after death. And we can be in the paradise or we can be in the hellfire. Don't, we should not shy away from this idea of, oh, we cannot talk about hellfire. This is something bad. No, this is the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has discussed in the Quran. So the, the, this is how I look at it, inshallah. Okay, the, the next question is, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How should, how should Muslims think about panic buying going on around us? Can you please elaborate on, elaborate how, how, how and to what level our behavior accounted in this situation? Okay, uh, look, when it comes to buying uh, stuff for taking care of your family, this is a very normal thing. Uh, whether there's a COVID virus or not, you, you buy grocery for your family, to take care of them. You can probably buy for your grocery for a week, two weeks. That's not a problem. The problem is to understand that uh, even the concept of risk, for example, uh, risk which is the provision, the thing that you get benefit from, right? Now, 
that, and if we can clarify this concept, I think it becomes very simple uh, to understand the rest. Uh, you cannot take more risk than uh, what is written for you. Okay, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has written something for you, you will get it. And uh, you can see in your own life many times you end up getting sometimes the bonuses from work or sometimes you probably get salary cut or sometimes you lose the job or sometimes you, you end up uh, getting a job that you never thought of it. Uh, so, um, or sometimes uh, somebody dies in the family and you inherit uh, a lot of wealth that you did not think of. So there are different, many different ways people get the provision in this, uh, in this life. Now, if we understand that, that uh, the risk is something that is in the hands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody can give you more risk than what is written for you, and nobody can take away any risk from you which is uh, written from by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, when we have this understanding, after that, uh, uh, about the concept of that we are accountable in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and uh, the, when we think of that way for every action that we are undertaking, we are accountable by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we have this idea of sharing automatically comes in, that when you are sharing with others, then uh, you, you, can, you, can get the, you can get the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's what pushes Muslims to, do, uh, to act this way, even though uh, they are in need and they will be fulfilling others' needs. But as far as that goes of keeping the, the uh, hold, uh, not the hoarding, but saving some stuff for, for your needs, that is allowed in Islam. Uh, but keep this in mind also, that just because you have saved some stuff in the house, not necessarily that is your risk because there is a chance that you may not even get coronavirus or COVID-19. You may die of something else. I, I know of a brother whose cousin just passed away. Uh, he was living in Saudi Arabia and uh, he was visiting Pakistan and uh, he, lives, he was living in Saudi Arabia and was just visiting in Pakistan and he dies there. Not, uh, he was just probably 50 years old. And, uh, he had a heart attack and he died. He did not die of COVID-19. He did not die of uh, accidents or, or diarrhea or hepatitis or this or that diseases. He just had a heart attack and he died. And because his time was over. So don't think of it just because you have saved something now you will be able to survive also. You'll be able to use all that risk also, right? So uh, whatever risk is there for you, you, uh, you will get it. If it's not written for you, you will not get it. Once you have this in mind, I think, I think the, uh, this, the state of panic goes away. Okay, Jazakallah Khair. That was the okay. Last one more came. In in these crises, what positive action can Muslim do for themselves and their families to improve their deen with this time to think? Okay, uh, actually, uh, you, 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 the, the, there's a lot of positive is the positives are coming out of this, right? Uh, first of all, for example, um, uh, Unfortunately, there are many memes that you're seeing uh, other way around, but uh, there's a lot of positives that are coming out. When the, when the people are spending more time with their families, actually they are really, uh, uh, they, they know each other well now. They know about each other, who they are. They, are they, they have no other choice but to be in their faces 24 seven. So now, the time the people were consuming uh, some time in different th things, now they are, uh, they are, they have been quarantined in their houses and now they have to stay with them. Now, now while they are with them, they can really get the best out of it if they can work on this idea and remember this idea, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned to us. That, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu, Oh, you who believe, save yourself and your families from the hellfire. This is the best chance we Allah has given to us, really, to connect back to our families, remind them about what the life is really about. That we can all die, forget about thinking of who's going to die first, or the, the older is going to die first, or younger is going to die first. No, any, we can all die probably at the same time. Not because of COVID, uh, 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 why, because of anything. So when we, I, I think it's a good reminder and uh, uh, to, to study actually 
Islam along with our families. Discuss with them, discuss this COVID virus-19, for example, the situation, and what does Islam say about it? What, how should a Muslim be reacting? Should we be panicking like everybody else in the world? Or should we be at peace and remember that we are hoping our reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We know that every, uh, every, uh, every nafs, every soul will taste death. And everyone will get paid in full the reward on the Day of Judgment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is the way uh, uh, I think we should uh, uh, look at that crisis time that there's so much Allah has actually created a goodness even in that crisis time. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, inna ma'usra yusra, inna ma'usra yusra, that indeed there is, uh, uh, the, there is a yusr in each, there are two yusr, there are two eases in each uh, uh, hardship. Okay, so. Uh, okay, Jazakallah khair. So uh, before I take the next question um, uh, from Chad, I think, okay, that was the last one of them. Uh, the people who are on audio only bridge, they can unmute themselves by pressing star six. Okay. Uh, because I'm not able to see, you won't be able to paste any question on the chat because that's only available for the people who are on the web. Um, I have, I don't see anything else. No raise hand, nor do I have any question on the chat. Okay. I, um, I, I have a question as a host. I'm sorry. I, I don't know if I'm allowed to ask questions, but I'm going to go ahead and ask the question anyway. Jazakallah uh, khair, brother, for, the, for this talk. Um, in regards to uh, what I think the brother said, uh, in what are the positives that come out of this? Uh, we see that a lot of uh, uh, the children, the youth, are, are staying at home and and aside from having e-learning and those type of things available to them from, for, from their school, um, what type of things can they be doing right now in order to kind of help them understand not only this issue, but also the issue of the Muslim Ummah? I mean, uh, the, 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 even the discussion we are having right now, okay, these are the kind of discussions I think uh, we should be having uh, with our families. Uh, it happened to be, I'm having a discussion like this because my kids are sitting in front of me right now. So uh, we should be having uh, these kind of discussions. We should be having, uh, I, I, uh, we should have a habit of already to uh, uh, do like a, some sort of sweet of session or something in the house. Uh, create an environment where you are uh, continuously in touch you know, uh, with the Quran. Uh, make sure that the kids are memorizing the Quran, for example. Uh, give them some books to read. And, and, and don't just give them books to read and you're not the one who's reading. I always remember one of the examples, which is don't expect your wives and children to be like Hassan and Hussein and Fatima and Aisha and you act like Abu Jahl. So uh, uh, you cannot expect them to be, uh, to be some good people, but well, you are not acting the same way. The, 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 and now, especially when we are living 24-7 uh, with our kids, uh, and besides that, they already, kids always learn more from the actions of, uh, of the parents than what they say. Many times they don't even listen to you when, you, when you're talking, but I, uh, I, I'm very sure, raising three kids, that they learn more from actions than what you say. So uh, your actions really translate to whatever you want them to be. So, it's the, so, so if you are the one who show them, okay, I have free time now, how I am utilizing my free time, then it will be easier for you to expect the very same from them. Uh, get them involved in reading books if, they, uh, if you can, uh, or have the, uh, discussions with them. Um, another question comes in, and this is more in regards to the world affairs. As, as you can tell, this COVID-19, uh, it's, it's one of the issues that, that we see, but also what else we see is a global crisis. And I think this is what Brother Rehan brings up in his uh, question in the chat, is that, is this a test for us? What are the consequences of the inflation, the global crisis? Um, see, what's I, happening? I believe, yeah, so I believe that, look, this is actually showing uh, another sign of the weakness in the current systems, right? Uh, you, you create a hoax or something or, uh, or anything happens out there. Uh, the confidence level actually brings the, uh, your stock market up or down. So uh, I, I believe that uh, uh, 
the, the, the Dow index was down like about 25% from the highest that has ever reached uh, within these past week or so. So now uh, uh, the, that is because of uh, uh, the, way, uh, the, the way the system is set up on the virtual, uh, on, the, on the virtual wealth. Uh, and, uh, the, and as we know that Trump talked about, they're going to insert $1.3 trillion. Uh, somebody has to ask him, okay, where is he getting the $1.3 trillion from? And then you realize that how that one uh, no money turns out to be a 1.3 trillion dollars by uh, the way the, the games have been played within this system, and, and that's because of the this is the way the capitalistic system is set up. In Islam, when we talk about that, uh, in Islam, this cannot happen like that. That uh, the, the stock market, first of all, there will be no stock market the way it is now uh, in Islamic system, but uh, but the economic system itself will not crash because of these kind of uh, incidents that happen. Uh, it's, it's built on, for example, the money system is built on real gold and silver that, that has its own intrinsic value compared to uh, now, it's, for example, the dollar is connected to the, to the petroleum and it's called petrodollar. Now Saudi is bringing the price down that can cause uh, other kind of a disastrous situations for the economy as well. So Islam, uh, when it comes to Islam, Islam looks at uh, the economy very uniquely, very differently, and that cannot uh, be hurt the way the economy is getting hurt today. Um, as far as the economic system goes, I think we can just talk about the economic system uh, itself some other time, uh, maybe with uh, in reference to COVID-19. Uh, I may not be able to answer at this point all the questions about this. Yeah, Allah will just make a quick dua for all the uh, at the end. So, <clears throat> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم والمغضوب عليهم والضالين آمين ربنا أتينا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا ذلمنا أنفسنا ولم توفي لنا ورحمنا أنا كنا من الخاسرين We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى for all the people who are going through the hardships because of uh, uh, COVID-19 may Allah سبحانه وتعالى uh, make it easy on them on their families uh, and the ones who are uh, the, uh, the Muslimin who have died uh, because of this disease, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept them as shuhada, as one of the hadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam talks about that, the people who die in the plague, they are, they are shuhada. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them all. And the ones who are uh, going through the sickness, uh, Muslims are not Muslim, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them shifa and make this uh, sickness one of the cause for the Muslims to get back on the right path uh, and uh, the non-Muslims, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide them towards Islam uh, and uh, may, towards the mercy of Islam, inshallah. Subhanakallah wa bihamdik, nashadu an la ilaha illa anta nasafu wa zubu alayk. Jazakumullah khair. Akhudam alhamdulillahi bil alameen.